I'm Mike Jimenez, and this is the Acquire Taste, sponsored by Locked On Spurs. We're streaming live on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Facebook. We have a special guest today, Ken's 5 sports anchor, Casey Vieira, will join us in about 15 minutes. Again, my name is Mike Jimenez, and we are live west side of San Antonio, northwest side of San Antonio. And we're going to be going here for about an hour, hour, 15 minutes or so. Thank you for joining us today. After the show is done, it is also placed on Spotify. So if you want to hear it on a podcast format, we're doing that as well. Joe Garcia, producing today's show. What's going on, Joe? Hey, man, I'm doing good. But you know what? What's going on here with the weather outside, dude? I mean, you were talking to me about <laughs> that when before you even got here, right? You were, And then you're walking up the driveway here. And I'm like, yeah, I never really noticed it because I was outside. And you're like, it's smoggy. It's humid. It's straight up. It's ass. nasty. It is straight up ass outside. I got outside, made my way over here, right? And I went outside, and it was like, I knew it was going to be hot. It's summertime, right? No yeah. kidding. It's summertime. It's the middle of June. It's supposed to be 100 degrees. I've lived here my entire life. But I walked out today, and it was the ugliest day I've ever experienced in my entire life. I wanted to run back inside. I now feel bad for one of my dogs being outside right now because the air quality is trash right now. And I was take, taking a look at my weather app on my yeah. iPhone, and it said that there's a an air quality advisory right now, and that it's sensitive for those who are in bad health, and it's unhealthy for those who have sensitive health. And a part, apparently, part of this is not only because of the smog. Well, where'd the smog come from? It comes from the smoke coming from Mexico. Yeah, that's making its way over. And I was reading articles today saying that the weather right now, the air quality in the Rio Grande Valley, McAllen, Edinburgh, Brownsville is just awful, even worse than what it is here in San Antonio. It's just awful outside. Yeah, it is pretty nasty. And not only that, but we're going to be contending with the African dust yeah. that makes its nasty appearance every year. And I was debating whether or not I wanted to go swimming today because oh, man. before the show started, we were talking about what are we doing to try to, you know, lose weight, lose weight a little bit, get some, <laughs> get some, act, get some activity going. And I was like, you know, I like to swim. And I've been doing about half a mile every few days or so. I go in this junior Olympic pool in my community park, right? And I go and I do 20 laps, and that's about half a mile. And today I wanted to do that. Today I'm scheduled to do so. And I'm looking outside, and it just feels ugly. And I know I'd be in the water and it would feel better. But just the, just, just the air, it's just saturated. It is juicy in a very, very bad way. Uh, but, yeah, if you – have to go outside don't do it just don't do it i mean if you have to you have to but if you don't just stay inside because it is atrocious outside yeah. casey Vieira is going to be with us in about uh, 10 minutes or so i'm excited about that casey and i uh, last i saw casey was the day that the spurs won the draft lottery we were both at the Rue pub uh i was working out there he was working out there and uh, we were part of the whole glory of the spurs getting the number one overall draft pick which by the way the NBA draft is one week from today. Victor Wembanyama will officially become a member of the San Antonio Spurs. So we'll talk to Casey about that. We're also going to get into the conversation about Nikola Jokic, the Denver Nuggets star. Get this. Spurs fans were in love with him <laughs> about a week ago. Yeah. Up until they won the title. And now Spurs fans have turned away from him because a couple of things. He's coming out here saying that he doesn't love his job and he lost his finals MVP trophy. What the heck is going on over here? So we're going to talk to about Nikola Jokic in today's show. Uh, we'll also get into the fact that the rivalry between UT and AM football is back on in 2024. They're going to play in Kyle Field. So how excited are we for that? Uh, we'll talk to Casey Vier about that as well. Again, he's from Ken's Five. And I also need to get into Mike Taylor. Yeah. The Mike Taylor show is over after 15 years. He signed off on Ticket 760. No goodbye show, apparently. No. I saw that video that he posted on Twitter last night, and I want to get into a conversation about Mike Taylor and that particular program. But again, my name is Mike Jimenez. We're live on Twitter, live on Facebook, live on YouTube. We will be on Spotify later on today. Joe Garcia producing today's show. Now, let's take a look at the calendar today. Today is the nine-year anniversary of of the Spurs winning the 2014 NBA Finals. It was the one over LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. 
it was the revenge factor game because the Spurs lost to them in 2013. That heartbreaking shot by Ray Allen in game six, which propelled the Heat in game seven. Nine years later, it's been nine years since the Spurs won an NBA Finals. And I'm looking back at it. We won in, 90, in 99, 03, 05, 07, and 14. Joe, I'm going to ask you a question. Of the five finals, which one is your favorite? Which one is your baby? Choose your favorite among the five kids. Man, I'm going to say, you know, I have to say it's going to be the 03. And the only reason, and I was telling you before. And it surprised uh, me, by the way. The show started is that is the last game that we saw David Robinson, the Admiral, play. And he walked off the court for the last time as a champion. And you have that iconic moment where he's going and he's embracing his son and picking him up. Yeah. And, and just in tears because he can't believe that he's he just finished winning the championship with the Spurs and he's getting to retire as a champ. And you go and see the same thing with Tim Duncan, an emotional moment that he's having as he's embracing his children just in, you know, shock and disbelief, kind of like the moment finally hit them and the realization of we just won another championship. You know, and, and to me, that was just such a special moment there because Spurs fans, they had you know, knew what it was like to win a championship in 99. But a lot of things happened in between the 99 and the 2003 season. But that 2003 season was just so special. And, and just seeing the Admiral walking off the court again for the last time was just something that's ingrained in my memory. It's like a, a core yeah. memory, you know, so. To me, that was very special. You got me in the feels with that one because I was not expecting that because, yeah. you know, 99 was special because it was the first one, okay? We got our first one. Yeah. And I remember going to the games there at the Alamo Dome, and it was so exciting being there with my, my friends. We were in our early 20s. And then Phil Jackson comes out and says, well, I mean, that's an asterisk season. Oh. What a jackass Phil yep. Jackson is. And 03 against the Nets, legitimized 99, right? Yeah. Because it's like, okay, we, we got a second one. And on top of that, you know, Duncan was at the greatest of his powers. On top of that, David Robinson gets to do something that very few greats do, which is walk out a winner and go out on top. So that being said, you go on to 05 against the Pistons, and that's the Robert Ory series. That's the series where Robert Ory carried us to that finals victory uh, in those games, that, that that one shot over Rasheed Wallace was amazing. That that dunk in Game Five, that was a very very good one as well. The yeah. the 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 only finals that we won that was trash was the one against <laughs> the Cavs in 07. The King LeBron James. It was a, a four game sweep. <laughs> I was watching the highlights of, of it earlier today, and I was like, man, it was tied at 62 with four minutes to go in the fourth yeah, quarter. Was... These games were awful, but you know what? A chip is a chip, baby. We got the banner. Excited about that. Yeah. But of the five, 2007 was the trashiest of them all. Now, part of me wants to say that 2014 is my favorite one because it was the revenge game. It was the one that, to think about the fact that in 2013, the Spurs were so close to winning a finals that the champagne was literally in the locker room. Mm. And Ray Allen knocks down that shot. I will never forgive Pop for having... Dunking on the bench on that play. Like, how was he not guarding the inbounds pass? How was he not in the paint doing something? Had him on the bench. Pop is the GOAT. I get that. But if there's ever one play that I believe in his heart of hearts, he wishes he could take back, it's that. Do you know what that play. moment was? That was Coach Pop effing around and he found out. Yeah, you know? he got cute. <laughs> yeah. He got cute. It was like Trusting analytics when you should just trust your heart, yep. trust your your trust mind, your, your brain yep. uh, when it comes to that. But I find that to be, uh, oh, my God, 2013 was so awful. Within seconds. Like, we were within seconds of winning a chip. It was a gut punch, dude, a complete gut punch. And it was just something that I'll never forget. But that's what made 2014 so much sweeter, the beautiful game. And just the, the way that the Spurs played. And how fluid it was. It was flawless. Knocking down threes. It was the perfect passing. Everyone was doing their job. Kawhi Leonard was becoming a star. But my goodness. I would say that before this conversation started, I would say 2014 was the one. But the more I look at it, 05 is doing it for me these days. Really? 
just going back and watching those games against the Pistons, the seven game yeah. series. Yeah. And, and it's funny because the whole question of whether the Spurs were a dynasty or not, I think is a tired and stupid thing because I don't believe you need to go back to back to be a dynasty. The Spurs won three titles in five years for crying out loud. How often do teams do that? On top of that, you have five over a 15 year period and going through the Lakers at that Kobe and Shaq. Exactly. Going through Kobe and LeBron yeah. on, on the book end of it all. Uh, but again, today is the nine year anniversary. Uh, the 2014 though is special, man. It is special. 99 special because it's the first one. Yeah. Uh, so man, but then Oh three, like you said, Got David Robinson yeah. going off into the sunset. That Absolutely gets you in the feels, remarkable. man. That gets you in the feels. It does. It does. And, and, and that's the thing about being a Spurs fan and having a winning team. You never know when it's it's just going to all fall apart. Yeah. You have to enjoy it while it's there and while your team is winning. I look at Dallas Cowboy fans. Dallas Cowboy fans have been, what, waiting 27 years? Yeah. That's a long time. I mean, you got to go back and break out the VCR, man, to go watch the highlights of the – you know, when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, watch those videos. And, you know, they we always get flack for that. People make fun of us all the time for that. But the Cowboys really haven't been a relevant team since that golden era. You right. know, they're known as, oh, they can't win the big one. They get into the playoffs. They're not going to go very far because they just can't win. They just they just can't overcome the pressure. You know, they I, have that stigma. I think that's the reason why. Whether Daz caught it or not is a big deal oh, today. You see, you're playing with fire when it's you bring because, that. It's because that was the year, right? <laughs> that was the year that the Cowboys actually had a Super Bowl contending team. That was their best year since Freaking 1996. Freaking Aaron Rodgers, man. I hate Aaron Rodgers for that. <laughs> you know, and I hate him too because they had another run, right? And they had that game and everybody was so excited. And I said, nope, there's still too much time on the clock. Aaron Rodgers is going to win this one. And sure enough, Show enough, he won the game. Yeah, you know, he worked mm -hmm. his magic. I say, it's brutal to think about, but that's that's the thing about being a sports fan. It's like it's like playing poker. You know, you you don't get wrong. You remember the highs, but you remember the lows even more sometimes. Oh it's yeah, just, man. it's just more dramatic, dude. I'm a Houston Oilers fan from back in the day, a recovering okay. Oilers fan. I I know what it's like to have a gut punch. You a Tennessee Titans fan? I take it. No, no, no. They left me, but Adams uh can. <laughs> Roll over in his grave for all I care. Hey, man, but Steve Air McNair was within inches, man, of winning. Yeah, Dyson, Super Bowl. Dyson was one foot away. Just one, one, one man. foot away. Not even a yard. One foot away from a Super Bowl victory against the Rams. I, I remember got, that. We got Casey Vieira from Ken's Five joining us right now. Casey Vieira, sports anchor from Ken's Five. What's hey. going on, man? How you doing? What up, boys? How are we? Dude, we're doing fantastic. We're reliving the glory days of the Spurs because today is the nine-year anniversary of the Spurs winning their last NBA Finals back in 2014. Uh, of the five rings, 99, 03, 05, 07, 14, is there one that sticks out as being greater than the others? I would say the second one because that was the year that Speedy Claxton um, benched Tony Parker. And I'm a Hofstra guy. Uh, <laughs> so the bias part of me will uh, will say that the the one they the year they beat the Nets. Uh, the rational part of me would probably say 14 because I, I tend to be a sucker for validation stories. Yeah. And I think that was probably the one I'd probably mark down uh, of the bunch. 20, I'd say probably the the 14 season would probably be the most notable in my mind i mean keep in mind though I, I i i have a little bit of a different perspective from you guys because i i didn't grow in 2014 i wasn't living in san antonio yet you know 2014 i was still up on the east coast and i think the optics of it collectively i say that as well on the outside looking in was that in the first few first four you know, uh, there was kind of a sense that it was the Spurs are weird, are kind of weird and lame and boring, and nobody really cares because they don't have Vince Carter and T Mac dunking on people. Nobody cares about the Spurs. You know, they're they're down there in Texas somewhere doing their thing. But I think once it got to the point where they played the Heat in those two finals back to back, 
And I think part of it was, you know, LeBron and, and D Wade, they were the ultimate heel figures during those first couple of years too. But it, there was a, a little bit of a sense of, of more of a, an appreciation, at least for me on the, on the outside looking in on the optical sense. So if you ask me of that bunch, I would probably say right now, probably 14 of the five. They all are like our children over here in San Antonio, Casey. We all love them for whatever reason. 14, though, that redemption, though, against that machine that was the Miami Heat. It, it was just different. And it was a an exclamation point among all things for the Spurs and Spurs fans. Joined by Casey Vieira of Ken's Five. Uh, this show is sponsored by Locked On Spurs. And in fact, yesterday you were on the Locked On Spurs podcast talking to Jeff Garcia about uh, the upcoming NBA draft. I think that you described it as the calm before the storm, if you will, because one yeah. week from today, Victor Wembanyama will be drafted number one overall by yes. the Spurs. Are we ready for this? Do we know what is coming our way? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to think about, though, right? I hope so. <laughs> it's crazy. We we have a rock star coming to town. I don't yeah. think people understand that. It's not. We've had generational talents before. We've had David Robinson. We've had Tim Duncan. But a generational talent that is basically a rock star in Victor Wembanyama is coming into town, and I don't think that many Spurs fans get that. I think that 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 they think that we're just getting another basketball player. It's different this time around. Uh, I, I know we do at Ken's Five because the promotional effort that we've been putting in behind the scenes, and you guys are going to see it next week, <laughs> you know, en route to our uh, a Spurs special that we got going on next Thursday night on draft night, would tell you that we're about to have the president, well, dependent, re, re, the rhetorical, hypothetical president yeah. that everybody likes moving into our town, into our city, because we are going all out for it and all i'm gonna say is like 20 years from now revisionist history this guy better make lebron look like a, a g-leaguer because <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna be serious egg on our face if this if this Wembenyama thing doesn't work out all i'm gonna say is that but uh i i think it's starting to settle in with a lot of people and it, it will for sure the only way that i would see it not working out is if there's an injury I mean, that's the only thing that I can see preventing Victor Wembanyama from being very, very successful on the NBA court. And the way that I look at it right now, the last generational talent that hit the floor arguably was Zion Williamson. And there are reports today that suggest that the New Orleans Pelicans are interested in even moving him for potentially the number three pick to get like a Scoot Henderson. Do you expect to see some fireworks going on in the draft next week? Again, just seven days away. I do. I do. I think it's going to be a very fluid draft all the way around. I think no pick uh, really yeah, outside of number one is really safe because of where each of these teams landed. There seems like there's been recently a little bit more smoke around a fire potentially pairing Scoot with LaMelo, which in my yeah. mind seemed like foreign. I didn't think there was any chance of that happening, but it tells you that they feel confident about one of those two guys being able to – uh, play play uh, uh, off the ball a little bit more. Uh, and but, but, you know, in my mind, I would think Brandon Miller would make more sense. And then there's the Damian Lillard thing with Portland at three. And if you're if you're going to follow the paper trail of what everything that they're saying is that that would insinuate that that pick is just on the outs. Well, who's going to end up there as well? Uh, and of course, there's obviously the Spurs factor. That's there's right. The Spurs factor with all this. I mean, they have enough picks through the 12 through 2028, 20, and they can't use all of them. They just can't. They, they, it's just not possible. So are we looking at a situation where they're going back into the top 10 to uh, you know, grab one of the Thompsons to grab Anthony Black a little bit later on? Are we looking at that as well? Nick Smith towards the you know, late lottery Ten, top 10 late lottery ballpark. So I think it's going to be tremendously fluid. Um, I, I'm not up here reporting or anything like that, but then you see the big guys, you know, the, the Woj's and the Shams of the world talking about Bradley Beal being up there as well. So you think about that, you know, the, the Bradley Beals, the Zions of the world. Uh, hey, I mean, I could see a world where Zach Levine probably gets thrown into the conversation as well. I think it's going to be very, very active. And I think beyond Wemby, um, the local regionalized part. It's going to be a very exciting draft night coming up a week from today. Yeah, a week from today. 
Yeah, one of the guards that the Spurs have uh, interviewed is Casey Wallace, reportedly, of yeah. Kentucky. I mean, he's probably not going to go in the top 10, uh, but the Spurs would have to jump back in to somewhere around 12 to 15 to get someone of that caliber. And if you, you look at it, the Spurs not only have the number one overall pick, but the Spurs have the third pick in the second round, which is also a, a range there that you could get a player. Historically, Jokic was picked in that area. Draymond Green was picked in that area. Mm -hmm. And so there's still talent to be had uh, in the 30s as well. So the Spurs not only have a crap ton of first-round draft picks, there's also a ton of second-rounders the Spurs have. I believe over the course of the next six years, the Spurs have north of 20 second-rounders, which is remarkable. All together, yeah. yeah, collectively mm -hmm. all together. And it's just ridiculous what the Spurs have. And they can't be drafting all these guys. There's not enough space on the roster. Right now, the Spurs could have three first rounders in 2024 could have three first rounders in 2025. And that is too much. Mm -hmm. It's a good position to be in though, to have all this draft capital. I'm not saying that I want them to, you know, just throw it away. But what I'm saying is that the Spurs now have weapons to go out there and do certain things. Again, free agents don't come to San Antonio necessarily, but we can force a player to come over here via trade. Mm -hmm. And we have the trade capital capital assets we have those contracts as well that are expiring. The Doug McDermott type of ca uh, of contracts, the Zach Collins type of contracts that that would be um, seen favorably by other teams. Yeah, the the luxury that the Spurs have right now is that they can go closer. I don't want to say all in because that would insinuate that they'd be a title contender sooner before or later, which I don't right. think. Which I don't think they would they would be with with getting any notable name. I, I don't think they do that. But they can go closer to an all in win now kind of mentality if they want, because they have the capital to do that. Or they can hit the brakes and be a little bit more patient and kind of let everything fall. No pun intended. You know, all the pieces fall into to place a little bit here. And I think for them, you know, knowing them a little bit, how they operate. I think that's probably the route that they go. And I think that's honestly the route that you should you should go right now because in the immediacy, what's the move? It's not a very good free agent class. You know, not to talk about the free agents that are there are going to particularly want to come to San Antonio anyways. I like Jalen Brown, even though all of a sudden you can't dribble the basketball, which is the <laughs> strangest revel revelation at like <laughs> of the entire postseason. Maybe we were blind to it. Uh, but Jalen Brown is still going to be in a contract year coming up in a coming up next year. Do you want to do that? Do you want to go after a, a, a dame that's 30 something years old and you move him here and you're still probably not close to contending? So what is what is the move to what what I don't under I'm not entirely sure what the sensical move is to go out and get a, a big name right now. That's why a couple of weeks ago when I was on on uh, Lachlan Spurs with, with Jeff Garcia over there, I was making the suggestion that they should talking to Casey Vera from Ken's five. I apologize. We had a little bit of a, a difficulty there, but we're talking about the free agents when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs and who the Spurs should go after. There are big names that are potentially available. Uh, I know that Jeff Garcia from lockdown Spurs and Ken's five was talking about the fact that, and he was reporting on the fact that there are some casinos out there that say that the Spurs have a legit chance of going after a Chris Paul, the third of going after an Al Horford type of player as well. I know there's, there, those are aging star players that have seen a lot of battles out there. Um, I don't know. The Spurs need to make some sort of move because mathematically they have to. Mathematically, if they want their share of the luxury tax proceeds, they need to spend northward of 90% of the salary cap. And right now that means the Spurs have to spend 22 to $28 more million dollars to go do something. So they're going to bring somebody in. They're going to have to pay somebody. And right now, the way that I look at it, I don't see the Spurs doing anything long-term. I think the Spurs are going to do something short-term and develop Wemby to see what they've got. They have to see what they've got with players like Trey Jones if they bring him back. Malachi Branham. Are these starter-type caliber players? Can Devin Vassell take a leap? Can Keldon Johnson regain his three-point shooting form from a couple of years ago? How does Jeremy Sohan fit into the mix? I think there's a lot of unanswered questions that Pop and RC and Brian Wright have to kind of figure out over the course of the next six to 12 months or so. 
So I don't see them doing anything major, but bringing in a, you know, a, a, a player to be a coaching player, if you will, dare I say a Patty Mills, to me makes sense. Mm -hmm. Jeff Garcia hates that idea from Locked On Sports. He hates that idea. I love that idea to bring him in and to have him teach Trey Jones how to be a starter in this league, to, to provide three-point shooting. I know that there's only so many minutes that can go around, but the Spurs need to sign somebody. I would much rather than bring in somebody who already knows the Spurs way. I think that's the most beneficial thing that they can do right now because that there is no sense of urgency to win, nor should there really be a sense of urgency to win, uh, given where the state of the roster is right now. Bring in a lot of veteran culture guys to fill this, you know, to build this team out a little bit. And I, you know, while Patty Mills is uh, still under contract right now, we were talking about, I think there's a lot of collective thought that there's a chance that Patty Mills will be potentially part of a deal and bought out and will in some capacity hit the market. But the general idea of bringing in a, a guy like Patty Mills and then potentially if the Chris Paul thing happens, which I'm still skeptical about those Vegas odds, it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a win now type of deal. It's, it's a culture move. It's a getting these young guys to understand how this league works, how this league operates, things like that. I, I think that's the most beneficial route that they should be taking at the moment because there is no sense, again, there's no sense of urgency to win. There shouldn't be a sense of urgency to win. And they're heading heading on the right track and bringing in, bringing, I, I know Patty Mills is not 105 years old like Udonis Haslam, but if you can right. have Udonis Haslam on your bench, you do it. Talking to Casey VR from Ken's Five, a little bit of a glitch there. Apologize for that. Uh, I, we, we have a, a comment that came in about someone who's watching this program from a, a flight, a United Airlines flight. <laughs> let, let, let's get that one. It's Art Garcia it says, watching now from the friendly skies, thanks to United Airlines Wi-Fi. Hey. That, that's a first for this show. Okay, that is a first for this show. So that's fantastic. And it's nice seeing that these comments are now coming in. Look at the production value that Joe Garcia is bringing in over here. This is fantastic. A lot of people were talking about um, their their favorite moments. A lot of them saying the 90, the 05 Spurs title victory was their favorite because they went seven games, things like that. Mike Jones reaches out to us, says, Pop needs to retire and the Spurs need to get with the times and let their players make money off of YouTube like other NBA teams. Uh, I was very critical of uh, Coach Pop because I'm a big believer that he's never done a rebuild. He never mm -hmm. has done a rebuild. But you get him good players, he can turn good players into great ones. We've seen that already. He has a good player coming in in Victor Wembanyama. So now I'm more comfortable with Pop being in charge of this team all over again because he's good. He, I, I've always said he's not Larry Brown. He's not going to turn a 20-win team into a 40-win team. He turns 40-win teams into 60-win teams. That's the difference. That's the pop thing. That's also the, the, the Phil Jackson, the Pat Riley type of thing. They take good players and turn them great. We have another comment here. I'd yeah. like to interject. Casey, we mm -hmm. have a comment from one of your, your good friends here, Jeff Garcia, who's really trolling you right now. Oh, boy. He's put in his Stop. favorite his favorite memory or favorite oh, uh, wow. championship. It's I mean, that was, that, was, that was kind of a given. You know I wasn't going to say that one, so. Yeah, so it, it says <laughs> yeah. right now I am picking the ninety nine. The question was the question was what was my favorite, not what was my least favorite. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Let's talk about some college football. I don't know if you noticed this, but the SEC made that announcement yesterday that uh, UT and A and M will, will finally play each other in football for the first time in thirteen years. It's not going to be this season. It's going to be the twenty twenty four season. As a Texan, I am excited about this. I looked forward to those November games between the Longhorns and the Aggies. It divided a lot of families, but it's been so long, and there's so much bad blood between these two schools. And I know they say the right things, like, yeah, we want to play each other. We want to play each other. But I believe that they've been purposefully avoiding each other for the better part of a decade. And next year, 2024, when the Longhorns have to go to Kyle Field, how big of a moment do you think that would be in college football all over again? Uh, certainly for us here in Texas.
lot of punchlines and flexing between the two teams, between between the two fan bases. And to get a, a sense of validation here, to finally get that back a little bit, it's good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I'm I'm excited for it. You know, my wife, my wife is a longhorn, so obviously there's a little bit of a burnt orange bias in this in this household a little bit for me on there you on go. Her. But I but I, I think I was gonna say stale is stale is is strong. But for the sake of the conversation, it feels like UT football needs this because things have gotten, again, for the sake of the conversation, a little bit stale. And, and yeah. we needed a sense of, you know, I don't, I don't care what Sam Ellinger says. Yeah, Texas is back. It's, it's not. You know, I mean, look where we are. Three years later, it's still the same kind of vibe. We're feeling a little bit flat when we're talking about the Longhorns here year in, year out. And I think this is going to be good. And I think there's a sense of rejuvenation that it provides to the game, certainly in this state that it provides to the game. And, you know, I'm looking I'm looking forward to it, especially if if the projected parties play out the right way and we get the whole Arch Manning thing happening in 2024 and then he's stepping into a spotlight like that. Can you that's going to be fun. Yeah, that spotlight's going to include UT taking on Georgia. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Home game <laughs> against Georgia. Welcome D to the <laughs> welcome to the big leagues, Arch. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, DKR is going to go off over there in Austin. You're going to have Georgia Bulldog fan over there. That is going to be a pricey, pricey ticket when that happens. And you know they're going to have a game against Oklahoma still. That rivalry will still continue there uh, over in uh, at the Cotton Bowl, which is fun. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. And you know I have a family that's kind of divided that way. My brother-in-law is a Longhorn. My sister-in-law is an Aggie. They married each other anyway. Uh, but you, you now know that that rivalry within the household is going to be there, which is fantastic because I miss the old Southwest Conference days. I, I miss when Texas and A&M played each other all the time. And you had that rivalry with Houston and Arkansas and Oklahoma and all of those different schools, Baylor. Uh, but now it's all splattered across the, 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 the landscape. Some are in the Big 12. Some are in the AAC. Some are in the SEC. And it's not as exciting for me anymore, but I am looking forward to the SEC and what they're doing right now with the Horns and with OU. Uh, going back to the NBA real fast, I don't yeah. know if you saw this, but Nikola Jokic lost his finals MVP trophy. I heard. Yeah. yeah, the night of. And then also pissed off a lot of people on Spurs Twitter. Spurs Twitter was all about Jokic. For about a week and a half, it was like, man, he modeled his game after Tim Duncan. We love this guy. Look at them. It's like Tim, Tony, and Manu 2.0, right? And then you hear Jokic after the final say, this is just a job. I don't love it. It's just, it's just what I'm good at. And then he loses his, his trophy. Didn't want to take part in the parade. Should people give him crap for all of that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I agree with you. Business. Who cares? You didn't win a championship. Do whatever the heck you want with it. <laughs> I mean, I thought that I, I identified with what he said. He goes, yeah. I mean, who, who loves their job? I mean, most people don't. Yeah. I, I mean, I would like to think he he at least likes his job. Given, right. <laughs> given he's very good at it and, and is very <laughs> profitable of doing said job. Uh, but listen, I mean, as it pertains to the Spurs fans with it, I think it's very pot kettle because – have we not heard forever the minor, you know, quoting pop, just do your job, do your job. 2014, yeah. everybody just do your job. So now the guy says, all right, I did my job and it doesn't really move the needle for me. You know, I did it. I'm good at it, whatever. And all of a sudden it's a, so egregious for, for him to say that. <laughs> Let the man live, you know, let him live. He's doing, doing his thing. And if he's winning and doing that, we have no ground to stand on to tell him how to feel one way or another. We're hanging out with Casey Vieira, sports anchor over at Ken's Five. Before we let you go, I need to have a get to know you segment. Okay. Feel, okay. Uh, we like talking about pop culture here, movies, music. Right now, if you're, if you're going to go for a run right now, you're going to go work out at the gym. What music are you listening to? I think it depends on the workout. Because if I'm going for a run, I like to I like to run the trails sometimes. I can't I can't run a treadmill. I can't do it. I'm like okay. I'm like dead in like ten minutes. But I can run all day outside. I can run like two hours outside. Not particularly fast, but you know, I can I can do it. So if I if I got that in the headphones, I like to put the the I like to put the EDM in there. 
and just nice. kind of gets me through some of the house, some of the house sets, you know, got some cascade deep house that just gets me going. If I, if I'm hitting the weights a little bit, I just need, I just need a little, little pop, so to speak. Um, put Rick Ross in my headphones, man. <laughs> Very good. Very good. It's a, it's a, it's cliche, but it depends on the circumstance. Yeah. You know, day, day to day, day to day. If I'm driving, if you got John Mayer in my car, I'm good. Anything Jay Z, good. Anything Common, we're good. Gonna become a big Roots fan over the years. One of the best concerts I've ever seen in my life is Justin Timberlake. Worth every cent. I highly recommend going to do it. So it depends on the circumstance. It depends yeah, on you, the you, yes. you mentioned Jay Z. I was just uh, watching a TikTok the other day where they revisited. It's been twenty years almost since the uh, Jay Z Lincoln Park EP that they put Collab. out. Yeah, yeah, the, the mashups. I had to go back and revisit that. I was back on Spotify going, oh, I got to add these to my my like yeah. list. But uh, that it was, was good. Great. Yeah, I, I think that's a Northeast thing too. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think you know Jay Z doesn't have the same impact down here as he does kind of up there in New York, New Jersey, where I'm from, tri-state area. Because he's like, you know, he says he says in the one song, "I'm the new Sinatra." I mean, I didn't, I didn't I obviously didn't grow up in the Sinatra age, but I can't imagine much of a you know a, a musical difference kind of God status as a Jay Z is up there. Understood. Hey, let's talk movies real fast. Okay. Which are the movies that you could quote word for word? Give me like two or three that you know basically every line, every scene of that movie. Zoolander. Dude. Really? <laughs> okay. Okay. That is yeah, a movie right the there. One. That is a movie that you either love or you hate. And I love so that you, movie. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. You're okay. Good. Good. That's one of the movies you. Now, did you see Zoolander? Before you started doing the segment and all that of, of the movies. You oh, no, seen. no. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I watched that before. I mean, that movie came out, what, like in 05, 04, 05. And, uh, you know, I think I got the black lung. I mean, one of my favorite lines, you know, there's so many <laughs> subtle lines in there uh, in that movie. I, I, I'm trying to think of like 30 of them, but the uh, Mugatu lines out there. Yes. Um, yeah. It was so great. So great. Which is, what's your favorite scene of that movie? Uh, well, I know a lot during COVID the, the, when we were here, the black lung got referenced a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know we, ref I know we referenced that a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. So the looks were Magnum, Blue right? Steel. Blue steel and La Ferrari. Tigre. Yeah. La Ferrari, Tigre. La Tigre. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it also is very, it's also very on brand for me too, considering I went into a business where I'm required to wear makeup to buff out the little bit of a glisten I got on my yeah. forehead over here. So it's very, it's very on brand that that's the way my career trajectory went. <laughs> that is fantastic. No, I mean, Will Ferrell was amazing in that movie. Uh, just, I mean, you know, what is this, a center for ants? I mean, so it's many different lines. Ants. I know. Um, the, the wake me up before you go, go. I know. Uh, where they're, where they're doing the gas fight. Yes. Which was great. Great yeah, time. That's great. Time. That's the one. I, okay. um, I was left. I, I was watching a little bit yesterday. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, and when you had Anthony Pippen on, and I was laughing because you were talking about the celebrity stories, and it kind of got me thinking a little bit because I knew we were going to talk. I, I I know you were trying to get me off of here, but <laughs> no, not at all. We got time. But, yeah, but I was just like, you know, because we're now we're talking about actors and we're talking about 2014, and I was like, what do you? What was my worst celebrity encounter? You can see my dog going around the back, by the way. Um, and I think my worst celebrity encounter one time was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Dude, we hear that a lot about him, too. It's it's really kind of messed up, the story. I, and I mean, I don't want to say this is because Kareem, Kareem, well, certainly not now, but he was far from one of my heroes. But I was thinking about it, and I, and this is when I was col in college, and I was doing a book. I was doing a book signing. He was doing a book signing, and he spoke. And he spoke to a whole theater, whole whole auditorium. And then afterwards, it was taking pictures and things like that. And I went up to him, and he like didn't even look up. He just like kept going. I'm like, okay, oh. man's doing the thing. And afterwards, we were outside. It was just me and my buddy outside the auditorium. 
and he and his people, they're leaving. And so, you know, me, I'm generally a pretty outgoing, friendly guy. And it was, you know, hey, Kareem, thank you for coming. Good seeing you. And one of his people just shrugged me aside. Mind you, it was just me and my buddy. He just pushed us off, not like shoved, but like brushed us off and no acknowledgement. And I was like, you are never going to be in my top 20 all time. <laughs> 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 All right. Who, what's, the, what's the nicest encounter you've had with, with a celebrity? Mick Foley. Really? Yep. Mick Foley. He's up there. Um, I was how tall, big. How tall is he? Taller than me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a big dude. <laughs> yeah, but it was when I was a little kid. That was a big, oh, okay. big WWF guy when I was a little kid. And so we were at some sort of, I don't remember the, I don't remember the mall, but very uh, completely unsolicited. He was having a, uh, a book signing there you know he had like one of his six books that he wrote when he whatever it was during his mankind days and he was wrapping up and i'm there with my parents and we walk by and we go up and like oh nick big fans can we get an autograph so he gives us an autograph and for about a solid 20 minutes he just stood there and talked to my parents and talked to us as as a as a parent as a dad you know just as a person yeah and like i'm like Years later, years later, I've grown to appreciate that a lot because when you're a guy at that time going at it's a um way. Sorry about that. You kind of uh, hate uh, no, you good. dropped off for a quick second yeah. there, but but just to kind of echo what you were talking about there, mm -hmm. it's a great moment when you you meet a celebrity and they're nicer than what you think they are, yeah. and they end up having a human moment with you as opposed to a fan interaction. Yeah, and there's a couple that that come to mind with me. I mentioned one yesterday, uh, Carrie Underwood. Yes. Uh, I got to meet her Your when daughter, she was right? super young. Yeah, she carried my daughter for like half an hour and carried really? her around wherever she was going, signing autographs, doing you know interviews, and just hanging out with her was very, very nice. She was so down to earth. And there's a comedian named Dave Attell, okay, who yeah. I got to meet in Phoenix when I was there on a business trip and I went to go see a show. And after the show, you know, went up to go say hi to him. And I was the last person to say hi because, you know, people were asking for autographs. Right. I didn't want an autograph. I wanted a photo. So I got a photo with him. And at the end of it, he was like, so what are y'all doing? And he just hung out for like 15, 20 minutes just talking about work and where you're from and all that. It, it wasn't a fan interaction. It was more of a right. – we're having a conversation, you know. Yeah. And I felt – it was like weird to like to, – uh, to, like I wanted to know when I should leave. You know, when is my, when, when do you want me to leave now? And he right. kept the conversation going. Lots of comments coming in on YouTube right now. Mike Jones wants you to know that Cypress Hill will get you pumped up. Oh yeah. The next time you go work out. Cock the hammer. My favorite Cypress Hill song. <laughs> um, why male models is what Chris wants yeah. to know. From why male models. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Uh, Chris Leha says Spurs Twitter is freaking wild because we are, uh, one way, one minute, then the complete 180, the opposite. Facts. What other pop pop culture question for you? Okay. This one's out of left field. I love it. But I think you can tell a lot about somebody the way they answer this. Okay. Oh, God. Growing up, let's say this going? middle school, high school, mm -hmm. right? Versus today. Who was your celebrity crush then? And who's your celebrity crush now? Oh, Depends on the age. Depends on, yeah, it depends on the age of middle school. Cause I, I was. Let's say you were in high school then. Stacy Keebler. Okay. So you're, you're really into wrestling. I was, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. big into, yeah. I mean, I was also big into Stacy Keebler. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't? <laughs> Come on, Casey. You're not going to give no love to Lita, man. Come on. Nah, it wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> Stacy Keebler. And my, my current celebrity crush um, was former K Fox El Paso traffic anchor who just happened to turn into my wife, uh, mm -hmm. Selena, uh, Selena Madrigal since Selena Vieira. That's a good answer. Good that's answer. A very good answer. That's a, family that's a married feud man. That, that's, that's a, a married man. Family answer. feud answer. 
Uh, but uh, I'll give you credit for that one. I'll give you credit <laughs> for that one. That is Casey Vieira from Ken's Five. Thank you for being with us today. You are awesome. Hope you can be on more often from time to time. You got my contact information. Very nice. You're a good man, my man. I yeah, appreciate thanks you for being joining on. us, Casey. Oh, thanks, boys. I'll talk to you. The Zoolander comment got me there, Joe. The Zoolander, I, I, I was not picturing Zoolander as being the movie that he could quote repeatedly because that's a movie that I can as well. It caught me so off guard Zoolander, that man. I lost I lost a lot of the quotes <laughs> in my head. What a great movie. You know what else was a, another great movie that you watch it and it's just so outrageous, man. You just can't help. But oh, I can't help but watch it every time I see it come out. Tropic Thunder. Oh, okay. my God, yeah. man. We did have a conversation about Tropic Thunder because Tropic Thunder is very controversial. Yeah. Because uh, Robert Downey Jr. was in blackface, but it wasn't to be racist. It was to shine a spotlight on racism. He was nominated for an Academy Award. Didn't win it. I don't think yeah. he won it. He didn't win it. But still, he was nominated for that. Uh, that's a movie that in 2023 cannot be remade. But great movie. Great, great movie. Last night, I was watching a couple of things. Uh, first, uh, I saw San Antonio FC play San Diego Loyal yesterday. It was on Hulu. Yeah. I, I, I logged on to Hulu, and there it was. Uh, it was a 2-2 draw. Uh, San Antonio FC plays Sacramento Republic next Saturday. Sacramento is in first place in the Western Conference. San Antonio FC in third place, so it's a big game, a big match next Saturday. San Antonio FC will be back in San Antonio July 1 to take on Birmingham Legion FC at Toyota Field. But while I was also in Hulu, the movie Role Models was on. Sean William Scott, Paul Rudd, oh, yeah, Elizabeth yeah. Banks. Yeah, That movie still does it for me. I mean, I love that movie so much. The Whispering Eye. <laughs> My wife <laughs>, laughs every time that scene comes on. Because what the Whispering Eye stands for, I'm not going to say. Yeah. But someone will say it <laughs> Unless in the you want to go PG-13. Someone will say it in the comments. <laughs> but that is such a good, good movie. There's not a lot of good comedies going on. Dude, I'm going to tell you what I'm watching right now on Netflix. I've been watching Never Have I Ever, which is basically a TV show that is predominantly aimed towards teenage girls or girls in their early 20s. Okay. It is one of the funniest shows I've ever seen in my life. It is so well done. And not only that, the person who does the narration is tennis legend John McEnroe. Really? He does. He's the perfect narrator. It's like season four right now. My wife and I will run through those seasons. It is such a good, good show. And it's basically about three girls in high school who are uh, growing up and they're trying to figure out what they want to, where they want to go to college. And they're trying to figure out what boys they want to date. It, it's, it sounds like, why are you watching this, Jimenez? Well, first of all, John McEnroe and Andy Samberg are the narrators of the show. Oh, okay. And I love both of them. Uh, but it's just so well done. It's very adult in the sense that it's not done in a Nickelodeon, Disney <laughs> kind of way. It, it's, it's more of a, if you enjoyed uh, Mean Girls or if you enjoyed Pitch Perfect, or anything like that. And those are shows that I watch because I have daughters. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I have I have daughters who like to watch those shows. My wife is really, really into it as well. Uh, but we'll be talking more about streaming and pop culture. But before we go, we need to address what happened yesterday on Twitter. A video that was released by Mike Taylor of The Mike Taylor Show saying that he is no longer hosting that show on Ticket 760, that the show is done after 15 years. And a lot of people reached out to me about this because uh, his announcement was made a week after I made my announcement that I was let go from San Antonio Sports Star. And people are trying to connect the dots. And I'm not saying that those dots should or shouldn't be made. I don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is that I want to address a couple of things. First and foremost, Mike Taylor is very talented at what he does. He is very talented. I've, I've met Mike maybe about three or four times in my life. And I wish him nothing but the best, whether it's it's here, it's at another station, if it's in San Antonio, some other city, I wish him the best because he is very good at what he does. And people are asking me, well, what if he is hired to replace you at San Antonio Sports Star? It would not offend me. It would not offend me because, you know, he needs to do what's best for him. He needs to do what's best for his family, 
for the people that he love that he loves. So more power to him if that's the case. Really, that that is basically it. Mike Taylor, to have a show for 15 years on talk radio here in San Antonio, not only yeah. not only in San Antonio, but to do it from Austin, to do it from Hawaii, to come on back and and all the struggles and the ups and downs that he has that he's had over the over the several years. Um more power to him, dude. He's 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 a very good sports talk yeah. guy. Somebody from uh, Twitter right now said, "Would you ever bring Mike on this show?" And we're talking about that. We talked about that before the show started. Yeah, and we I, did. I I, I want to reach out to him, but I don't know the, you know the the dynamics behind what went down at Ticket Seven Sixty. Yeah, uh, it is a small world when it comes to radio here in San Antonio or doing podcasting in San Antonio. Uh, the whole thing about Mike Taylor and, and whatnot. I mean, I heard about it a long time ago. Yeah. So it wasn't a shock to me that that he made that announcement. In fact, I knew about it uh, a while back. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that it's a business, and we all run in similar circles. And Mike has always been very nice to me when I've met him in person. I wanted to say hi to him the other day. Uh, I was over. I was doing a show at the uh, Texas Open over uh, on the north side. And he was doing his show over there, and they sat us next to each other. We were probably 15 feet away from each other. He was doing his show. I'm doing my show. We're both loud talkers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but every time he was in commercial break, I was on air. And every time I went on commercial break, he was on air. And we never had that moment where I could go over and say hi. Um, I listened to the Mike Taylor show for many, many years uh, before getting on radio myself. I would oftentimes consider myself part of Thunderdome. I would go to the events. Uh, I would take part in, in, in Ticket 760's uh, promotions and what they had going on. I would call in. I would do all sorts of things like that. I am a fan of local sports talk radio. The problem that I see, though, right now is that with me out and with Mike Taylor out, and, and that's not to say that he's out forever. If he comes back, I'm sure he has a... Uh, a contract that says that he cannot compete yeah. with Ticket 760 for a period of time. Typically, my experience in the media, that's six months to a year. Yeah. So, Basis. Like the Venn diagram did not connect. You know, the people who listen to my show didn't really listen to his, and the people that listen to his didn't listen to mine. Um, but there's a void right now in sports talk radio, and that void is the fact that we now have no Latinos in sports talk radio in San Antonio at this moment. It is June 15th, 2023. There are zero. Yeah. And I'm not a math major, I'm not a math expert, but in a city. As big as San Antonio, with a 64.3% population that is Hispanic, that is outrageous that it has come to this. And I know that there's circumstances, but I would hope that San Antonio Sports Star, Ticket 760, would reflect on this for future hires. That they understand that, that there's a reason why Mike Taylor was so popular and is still so popular. And why my announcement went viral, it was because we represent San Antonio in a different way. Because we are Hispanics in San Antonio, and we're from here. He's yeah. from Dallas, but he's been, he's from Fort Worth, rather. But he is somebody who has lived in San Antonio long enough to kind of know what's going on and has assimilated himself into San Antonio culture. Yeah, knows the people. And, yeah. and he's been accepted by people in San Antonio. Um, I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that right now, June 15th, 2023, that we live in a city that doesn't have someone on a traditional radio station who's of Latin descent. In a, in a city who's the, whose population is predominantly Latino. 
you know, that's a head yeah. scratcher, man. Yeah, it is a head scratcher. And I, I'm, I don't want to get into like the reasons why I believe it is so. Yeah. I do have a theory. Um, but it just needs to be right. It needs to be corrected somehow. And San Antonio has a lot of talent here. Uh, Brandon Medina is going to be working with us. Yeah. Right. He's going to be doing a fantasy football show. By the way, Brandon Medina is on Locked On Spurs today with Jeff Garcia talking about the Spurs, also talking about the things that he plans on doing with our network here. Um, but that is somebody who should have been on the radio from the get go. That is somebody who wanted to be in this industry, who is super talented. Brandon Medina, I'm happy to be working with him again. I know you are as well. Yeah. Uh, but there's something that's amiss here when it comes to local sports talk radio. And I just want Mike Taylor to know that uh, uh, it was a great run for you out there. Uh, I hope nothing but the best. If it is here in San Antonio, if it is at a different station, uh, or if you're just getting out of the industry, just know that it's a great run, man. And and I, I was a listener for many, many, many years. And I just wanted to say uh, congratulations because not, not many people can make a run for 15 years. Yeah, the I think he had the longest running show I think the other guys who had another show that lasted quite a bit as well was uh, the guys from way back in the day with 99.5 Kiss. Lyle and Han. Lyle and Han. Mm -hmm. You know, Staples in the morning, yeah. uh, you know, with 99.5. So Mike's in that company, man, where he's had a, a huge run, you know, over at the Ticket 760. Sad to see it come to an end, but wishing him the best in anything he decides to do moving forward. Lots of comments about this right now that are coming in. Uh, let's, let's see if we can take, uh, I don't want us not do that one. <laughs> that, uh, that was, uh, quit, quit reading my mind, my man. Uh, yeah, we're not going to read that one. Uh, but, uh, I, I like the fact that we now have the ability to show what people are saying, you know, Mike reaching out and saying, uh, Rudy J sports grind and Mike Taylor, all leave ticket 60 within 20 months, 12 wow. months within 12, 12 months, months, rather. Um, you know, others saying, uh, Mike Taylor should go battle Skip Bayless five times a week. Well, you know, <laughs> Skip does need somebody. He's talking about the original Skip, not Skip Jimenez, uh, the original Skip. Um, Josh was saying, amen, Jimenez. Way to be a class act. Love your show. I appreciate that. Let will show that. Here. There you go. But I like the technology there, Joe. Look at this technology. Do you know how many people have reached out to me over the past? And this is your creation, man. Yeah. You know, you, you just threw me into the frying pan. Uh, <laughs> but the 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 amount of people who have reached out to me saying, wow, this is something that can actually take off. Yeah. And you and I debated. Uh, it wasn't a debate. We both agreed. Uh, I was like, you know what? I am going to extend that invite to Mike Taylor. Yeah. And have have hope that he'll come on here. And nothing politics or nothing uh, about what's going on behind the scenes, but just to talk sports and BS yeah. for a good hour. That would be fun. Yeah, you can talk about hood rat stuff, man. That happens over here in the in the barrio of yes. Marbach, you know? That's exactly <laughs> right, man. We'll bring, we'll bring the tacos. Hey, if you're watching right now, don't forget to make some comments and hit the like button. If you're on Twitter, hit the like button as well. On YouTube, hit like uh, because it means a lot. So, explain what that means for the algorithms and, and how that all works. Yeah, if you're enjoying the show, you're watching us wherever you're watching us from. You're watching us from YouTube. You're watching us from Facebook or Twitter. Give us a like. It helps us with the algorithm because the more that, you know, you show us some love and you give us a like, thumbs up, even share this, you know, live stream. It helps us rank higher, yeah. which in turn helps the show grow. And that's the reason why Mike is actually doing this. He's doing it for you, the fans. So you can continue to enjoy watching Michael Jimenez and doing what he does best. So if you like the show, show us some love. Show some love also to Jeff Garcia from Locked On Spurs. He is, uh, Locked On Spurs is sponsoring this show right now. Uh, Locked On Spurs, I'm looking up his, it's Jeff G Spurs Zone, right? Is, is yep, Jeff, Jeff G Spurs Zone. So you can follow him on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. Uh, I follow Locked On Spurs when it comes to uh, Spotify. I download or I, 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 I hit play on Spotify on his podcast daily. It's daily Spurs content. Uh, I know Brandon Medina, who's part of our network, is on today. Uh, Casey Vieira was on the day before. You were on the day before that. Yeah. I'm typically on. 
my good buddy James Pledger from San Antonio Sports Star is frequently on as well. Can watch and we just we just talk and debate sports, talk and debate Spurs. Uh, but thank you for everyone for watching. If anyone wants to sponsor the show, just DM me either on uh, Facebook or on Twitter. Let me know. We'd be happy to have you as part of the family. And this is what keeps the show going. Uh, again, congratulations to you, Mike Taylor, uh, for your 15-year run over at Ticket 760. Very, very impressive. And your fan base is very, very loyal to you. Uh, I know they'll be supportive of whatever you do, whether it's on radio here in San Antonio or elsewhere. I know they'll be very, very supportive. But there's a lot of different outlets that we have here. Joe, anything you want to add before we leave? You know, I just enjoy all the comments. You know, really, at the end of the day, we appreciate you all interacting with us. And yeah. you know what? I'd like to go ahead and add something that we're going to start trying probably within the next week. We're actually going to start incorporating, hopefully, some live calls. And also, maybe we can go ahead and incorporate Twitter spaces into this whole thing. Yeah. So we can go ahead and make the fans part of the show. Dude. Okay. If we start adding phone calls to this whole thing the professional aspect of this is just so tremendous what's going on um having i'm trying to figure out is this a radio show is this a podcast is this a tv program it is all in one yeah it's anything you want it to be you know it's your show yeah you make it whatever you want this is great yeah i'm lining up some guests for next week so that's going to be pretty exciting um one of them is that I'm hoping to get, she is about to go play the World Series of Poker. Oh, the nice, big, the, man. Big, the big tournament. She does very, very well for herself. We're trying to nail, nail down that uh, particular interview, uh, but we're in talks right now. So lots going on right now. Uh, but again, uh, San Antonio FC, remember, they're back in town July 1st. I'm going to try to go to that game, that match. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to make that happen. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have another guest coming on tomorrow. Uh, to kind of debate things. Yeah. But this has been fun. Look at all these comments. Joey Fernandez, the I love listening to you and all the other hosts on the radio, but I'm liking this YouTube platform because you can do so much more with the show. The number of people who've reached out to me from San Antonio Sports Star, they've reached out to me from Ken's Five, from KSAT 12, it's been overwhelming. The production value of this is very, very good. No, we just need to build on it. We need to build on it and and uh, build this show even bigger and better. And again, the goal is, is to fill the gaps. Right now we're going from 12 to about 1, 115 or so. We want to fill the gaps all the way, maybe all the way back to 10 a.m. Chris Leha wants to know, when am I getting Paige on the show, man? <laughs> Paige Speronic. Maybe we'd have to have that one as a, I don't know, an OnlyFans or something, man. Dude, okay, first of all, <laughs> Annie Agar is more likely to be on this show because she is a legit friend. She's a legit friend of, she's been somebody that I can count on. Uh, I love me some Annie Agar uh, from Bally Sports, but Paige Bronick, man, that's a, that's a good looking woman, man. Got to meet her in Phoenix earlier this year. And there's a concept What's from that? one of the listeners. How about bringing in listeners from time to time? Paul come too. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. You bring the tacos. We might get you on here and give you some airtime. That's right. <laughs> but again, thank you to Jeff Garcia. Thank you to uh, Locked On Spurs for sponsoring this. Again, uh, follow him on Spotify. Follow him on Twitter as well. Lots of great daily content when it comes to the Spurs. That is Joe Garcia. My name is Mike Jimenez. This has been the Acquire Taste. We'll be back tomorrow. And see you guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.